to the Kent Lap Podcast. I think we have a really strong plurality. I think at the Austin Stone, one of the unique things that Matt Carter, our founding pastor, brought, in addition to the person of Jesus being the hero of our church, like that's not just lip service, that's genuinely true. I think Matt in particular had the opportunity to think like celebrity culture, but chose in humility and fought against it very deeply in his own soul to say, no, Jesus will be the supreme hero of the Austin Stone, and that's going to be evidenced in our plurality. That means in the pulpit, that means in ministry, that means in team leadership, that means in everything, we are going to humbly submit ourselves to one another, though imperfectly. We've had plenty of conflict, plenty of tension. Matt laid that foundation. And I think we've continued to build on that foundation. Kevin has deeply valued and modeled plurality, humility, and submission. Again, it's not easy. It is very difficult. It is not perfect. But he does that really well. And that's become a hallmark, I think, of our leadership. So when push comes to sub, we have, I think it's currently 11 people who would be in our like senior leadership room, mm-hmm. each with different gifts, each with different contributions. But again, 11 people is a lot. It is a lot. To have in a decision-making room. And again, it's not without its challenges, but it is a pretty healthy decision-making room that um, really does value a a plurality, a myriad of different kinds of voices, and can do it decently well, I think, together. So that Jesus-focused plurality, non-celebrity leadership culture that you just talked about, it's, it's fascinating to me that you actually brought this up, because this is something that I wanted to ask you about very mm-hmm. specifically. Um, last night, I was, ha- I was over at uh, friends, Adam and Colleen Reitelbeck, who were in Nashville and moved back to Austin about a year ago. And they, I think Colleen has attended the Stone in the past. They're not going there now, but recently they just popped in for some reason. There was something, I think their church went online at last minute or something. I forget what it was. But... So we're talking about this week and and uh, who's going to be on the podcast and stuff. And she said that it seems like the leadership of uh, the Austin Stone has been deliberate or strategic about a this non-celebrity. She couldn't actually name the lead pastor, which surprised me because she lives right here and she's mm-hmm. attended before. Um, but I picked up on that too when I was kind of researching you and then Kevin Peck, I think is, is uh, tomorrow potentially. Yeah. Pretty sure it's tomorrow. Um, that what you just described is apparent to me from as an outsider who has just been browsing around on the internets, basically getting some information. So that was a very, that's a deliberate move. That's a strategic move on behalf of the Austin stones leadership. Mm-hmm. And it started from uh, Matt Carter and it was kind of as carried along by Kevin Peck. Yeah, that's definitely uh, you know the summary view of exactly how it unfolded. And is that is that um, primarily so that Jesus can be the center point of this church and this ministry? I assume that's obviously that's the mm-hmm. ultimate, right? But is there a secondary motive there so that if we all make mistakes, right? If a lead pastor or if someone in leadership happens to make a mistake, the whole church doesn't crumble just around that. I mean, is that's, it that practical? That's maybe preventative and risk management thinking. Um, I would say probably it is more rooted in human flourishing. The recognition that God has created us in His image, but He has limited us. He's given each one of us a limited number of days, limited number of hours, limited amount of emotional capacity, distinctive giftings, and recognizing that no one person can fulfill the ministry of Jesus. We follow Jesus, but the Holy Spirit pours out different gifts— I was just having a conversation with one of our pastors uh, last evening, and he was just critiqued by some people in our church, and he receives it with humility, and he says, I'm so sorry, I desire to be better. But he's also recognizing I'm a human. Mm -hmm. I can't be everything that you desire for me to be, and if I'm a slave to your expectations, I become the sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who, you know, in a sense, dies. And um, that's in part Christ-like. It's how we're supposed to be as shepherds of God's flock. We willingly and voluntarily would give our lives for the sake of God's glory and for the sheep. But it is to say we also value the fact that we're humans, and for us to flourish as shepherds who give sacrificially and generously to the body means we recognize our limitation and our humanity, Mm -hmm. and we're going to lead out of our humanity. Um, We grew very fast as the Austin Stone, and we had a season, I would say, of youthful hubris that said we can do 
anything. Mm. There is that real sense where, you know, uh, there were some years where we were so convinced that literally anything we put our minds to, we could do. And each of us in some way, shape or form, uh, reaped what we sowed. Um, I think a lot about Galatians chapter six, verse eight, and this idea of reaping what you sow. Those who sow in the flesh will reap in the flesh. Those who sow in the spirit will reap in the spirit. And Mm -hmm. our humanity means that we can sow and we can reap, and we're going to sow in the spirit to the best of our possible ability. But sowing in the spirit means embracing the fact. Mm -hmm. I can't be everywhere at all times. I cannot be... Um, Superman, Mm -hmm. you know, and it requires a team of people who are called according to God's purposes with shared ownership, but complementary leadership and gifting to really thrive and to serve a body like ours and to see the things we desired to happen actually come true. Mm -hmm.